G'day! Are you ready for yet another astounding property of the Himachandra numbers, also known as the Fibonacci numbers? I bet you are. Here it goes. Here are the first few Himachandra numbers. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on and so on. The ninth one is 34, the tenth one will be 55, we can keep on going. But now let me do a little, something a little strange. Let me count how many of these numbers are smaller than 1. Well, none of these numbers are smaller than 1. Zero of them are smaller than 1. Now I'm going to count how many of these numbers are smaller than 2. Well, the first two are smaller than 2. How many are smaller than 3? Uh, the first 3 are smaller than 3. How many are smaller than 4? The first 4 are smaller than 4. How many are smaller than 5? Strictly smaller than 5 is still just the first 4. But how many are smaller than 6? Now I can see it's going to be uh, those 5 are smaller than 6. How many are smaller than 7? Still those 5. How many are smaller than 8? Uh, strictly smaller than 8, it's still those 5. How many smaller than 9? Now it's 6 of them. Six of them. So then I kept going, you'll get another 6 next, another 6, another 6, another 6, then a 7, and then, then I stop there. Great. People call this the frequency sequence of the Hemachandra numbers. So I'm going to call this the frequency of the Hemachandra numbers, the FHN sequence, if you like. Okay, great. But here's the astounding thing. Here it comes. Let's now take the frequency of the frequency sequence. The frequency of the frequency sequence. Here it comes. Ask how many of these numbers here are smaller than one. Well, that first one's smaller than one. One of them. How many smaller than two? Oh, just that first one still. How many smaller than three? The first two. How many smaller than four? Three of them. How many smaller than five? Oh, uh, all those five of them there are smaller than five. How many smaller than six? Uh, all these are smaller than six. That's uh, eight of them are smaller than six. How many smaller than seven? Oh, that's all these, that's eight of them, plus the extra five sixes, 13 of them, and so on, and so on, and so on. The frequency of the frequency of the Hemachandra numbers gets you back to the Hemachandra numbers. Whoa, that's mind-blowing. But wait, but wait, there's more. Let's do something even more crazy. Let's go back to the Hemachandra numbers, and let's add the position numbers to each number in the sequence. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 4 plus 3 is 7. 5 plus 5 is 10. 14, uh, 20, and uh, 29. Okay, 29, just fit it in. Great, so I took the Hemachandra number and I added its position number. So it's HN plus N if you like. But let's do the same thing with its frequency sequence. It's position number plus the terms of the frequency sequence. The frequency sequence plus its position number. What do I get? 1 plus 0 is 1. 2 plus 2 is 4. Uh, 3 plus 3 is 6. Uh, 8, uh, 9, uh, 11, uh, 12, uh, 13, and I'm right out of room. We'll stop there. Great. But then look, look at what we've got. Whoa, if I do this strange adding of position numbers to the terms of each of the sequences, I see the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I bet if I kept going, each and every counting number appears in either the top one or the bottom one exactly once. This actually creates all the counting numbers split between the top row and the bottom row, which is astounding. What's going on? What is it about these numbers? But wait, there's more. Let me clean the board. I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, it turns out the prime numbers have this amazing property too. Here's the sequence of the prime numbers. Let's work out the frequency sequence of the prime numbers. How many of these prime numbers are smaller than one? None of them. How many are smaller than two? None of them. How many are smaller than three? Just one of them. How many are smaller than four? It looks like uh, just two of them. How many are smaller than five? Still those two. Smaller than six? Three of them. Smaller than seven? Three of them. Smaller than eight? Uh, or oh, eight, four of them. Smaller than nine? Four of them. Four, four, five, and keep on going. Great, great, grand, and good. Now take the frequency sequence of the frequency sequence of the prime numbers. Whoa! Do it again. Ask how many of these numbers are smaller than one? Two of them are smaller than one. How many are smaller than two? Uh, those three are smaller than two. How many are smaller than three? Uh, still, uh, oh no, one, two, three, four, five of them are smaller than three. How many are smaller than four? Oh, all these are smaller than four. That's seven of them. How many are smaller than five? It's all these, and that's 11 of them. And we're getting the prime numbers back. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, what about this weird adding position numbers? Look what I did, the nth prime number plus its place. Uh, 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. Uh, 8, 11, 16, 19, uh, 24, and so on and so on. And the frequency sequence plus its position number. Each term plus its position number gives me 1 plus 0 is 1. 2 plus 0 is 2. Uh, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10. Okay. Are uh, all the counting numbers appearing split amongst these two sequences? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, Bevy kept going. The answer is yes. What's going on? But wait, more is true.
Here's the thing, this is true of any sequence you want to write down of non-negative integers. As long as your sequence never decreases, you can repeat entries for a while, but as long as you're generally going up, this property is sure to be true. I just made up the sequence right here. I worked out its frequency sequence, you can double check me on this. And if you take the frequency sequence and the frequency sequence, you will get how many numbers less than one? One of them. How many less than two? Those two. Less than three? Still those two. Less than four? Still those two. Less than five? It's now those three. Less than six? It's now those three. Less than seven? It's now those six. And on and on and on. The frequency sequence of the frequency sequence is guaranteed to get you back to the original sequence. Whoa! And the position number thing, does that work? Why yes, for any sequence. Take each term and add its position number. I'll get 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 13. Do it for the frequency sequence. The frequency sequence plus its position number each term. Uh, 1, uh, 3, uh, 7, 10, 11, 12, 14, and so on. And that is guaranteed to be a representation of each and every single counting number split between the top line and the bottom line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and on and on it goes. This is astounding. This is amazing. It's wonderful. This result's been known for actually a good 65 years. It was proven in 1954, or I should say discovered and proven in 1954 by Moser and Lambeck. Um, but here is actually what I want to present today, a beautiful visual proof that some high school students came up with but some 10 years ago, which is just astounding. That's why I want to share it with you right now. They proved it for any sequence of this type. So let's do it. Okay, now we're ready to see, literally see, what's going on with these sequences and frequency sequences. But let me do with the example I had before. So here's a sequence of non-negative integers. In fact, it's a non-decreasing sequence of non-negative integers. And I claim any such sequence can be represented by a picture of dots and dashes like this. In fact, this picture here is actually a visual representation of that very sequence there. How? How do you unlock that? Well, the idea is to think of this. Take SN to be the number of uh, dots, number of dots to the left of the nth dash. Okay, so what does that mean? Let me be concrete. S10. That will be the number of dots to the left of the tenth dash in my picture. So where's the tenth dash? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There it is, the tenth dash. How many dots are to its left? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's seven dots to the left of the tenth dash. I claim the tenth term of our original sequence is a seven. Is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, the tenth term is indeed a 7. So that's the code for unlocking a picture. In fact, hey, that's how I also built up the picture. Start at the beginning and you see how to build up a diagram that fits the sequence. For example, I want the first number to be 1. That means I want the first dash to have one dot to its left, so I made that happen. I want second dash to have two dots to its left. I made that happen. I want the third dash to have two dots to its left as well. There it is. I want the fourth dash to have two dots to its left as well. Made it happen. But I want the next dash, the fifth dash, yep, to have three dots to its left. I made it happen. Sixth dash to have three dots to its left. The seventh dash to have six dots to its left, and so on and so on. So now you can see how to build up a sequence, build up a picture to represent a given sequence. Great. All right. So we can visualize the sequence. So the question is, can we visualize the frequency sequence as well? All right, just to be really clear, let me make it concrete with an actual number like 5. I'll do the fifth term of the frequency sequence. Can we visualize that? Well, first of all, what does that mean? The frequency sequence is the number of terms of the original sequence that are less than 5. Let me write that down. This is the number of terms of the original sequence that are less than 5. Okay. But now my terms of the original sequence are being represented by dashes. So all the dashes that give a number that's less than 5. Well, the number they give is the number of dots they have. So this, oh, so this must be the number of dashes, number of dashes with less than five dots to their left. Okay, so take it really slowly because my brain can only handle things slowly. All right, so I want the number of dashes with less than five dots to their left. For example, this dash is fine, has less than five dots. That one's not fine, has more than five dots. That one's fine. Okay, so how many dashes have less than five dots to their left? You think about it for a while, actually, you say, oh, let me focus on the fifth dot. One, two, three, four. There's the fifth dot. Fifth dot's right there. Because any dash to the left of the fifth dot must have less than five dots to its left. Any dash to the left of the fifth dot must have less than five dots to its left. In fact, they're the only dashes that have less than five dots to its left. So actually, this is the number of dashes, number of dashes to the left of the fifth dot. 
Whoa, whoa, I like that. That's, that's a little bit magical. Um, because actually, let me do it generally. I think, and now I could say, changing pen, because my pen's running up. Uh, in general, the nth term of the sequence, frequency sequence is the number of dashes to the left of the, in general, nth dot. I love that, I love that. Because when I compare it with the original statement, there's magic, there's magic to notice. But let me get rid of the middle stuff, that's gonna, that's gonna confuse things. In the original sequence, my picture has the nth term of the original sequence is the number of dots to the left of the nth dash. In the frequency sequence, I want the number of dashes to the left of the nth dot. The roles of dots and dashes have interchanged. To go from the sequence to the frequency sequence, just change your focus from dots and dashes to dashes and dots. Which then means, if I do the frequency sequence once, and I do the frequency sequence again, I just have to interchange the roles of dots and dashes in my thinking, and where would I be? I'll be back to the original definition. Taking the frequency sequence of a sequence interchanges the thinking about dots and dashes, which means if I do it again, I'm going to undo what I just did and must be back to the start. The frequency sequence of the frequency sequence must be back to the original sequence, which is mind-blowing. Kind of fill in our laps, it just has to be so. Wow, wow, okay, okay, it's gonna take a little while to process what just happened there, but there it is. Interchanging the roles of dots and dashes, interchanging the words of dots and dashes in the definitions means doing it twice, you've undone it. Wow, wow. Okay, but what about the position elements? Um, you know, the SN plus Ns and the frequencies plus Ns. What's going on there? What's going on there? So the way to think about that one is actually, let me look at the positions of these symbols in my sequence. Here's the first symbol, second symbol, third symbol, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, and so on and so on and so on. It's probably enough. Okay, the way to get a sense of how to play with the uh, next issue is to ask a question like this. Uh, what is, is the location of the eighth dash? Okay, I'll be specific there, the eighth dash, but we'll do it in general in a moment. Okay, great. Um, well, I can just look at it. Uh, the eighth dash is here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's in position 15. But how can I deduce that without looking at the picture? Well, its location is actually given by how many things are to its left. And I know lots of stuff about how many things are to its left. For example, if it's the eighth dash, I know there are seven dashes to its left. So to its left, to its left, there are, bad handwriting, seven dashes. Because if it's the eighth dash, there must be seven dashes to its left. But I also know how many dots are to its left. Remember, a number of dots to the left of the eighth dash is actually given by our sequence. That's the eighth term of our sequence. It has this many dashes to its left and this many dots to its left. So it has a total of uh, S8, whoops, S8 plus seven objects to its left. Oh, there are that many objects to its left and then it's the next position on. So its location number must be this number, S8 plus seven plus an extra one. <gasps> Simplest one is eight. It actually is S8 plus eight, which is what we were doing before. In general, in general, ha ha ha, I think we've got it. Uh, Sn plus n equals the location of the nth dash, which is beautiful. There it is, love it. But then I could ask the same question about dots. Location, location of the nth dot, which means I'm interchanging the words dots and dashes in my mind. I'm doing all my thinking again, interchanging dots and dashes, so I must be talking about not the sequence where I had dashes and dots, I must be talking about the sequence with dots and dashes. I must be talking about the frequency sequence, exactly the same reasoning must tell me, oh, for this sequence with dots and dashes interchanged my mind, plus the position numbers ends, must give me the location of the nth dot. Whoa, whoa. Now, that's it. I think it does, does it. Because look, look, all these locations of the dashes are actually giving me some counting numbers. And all the locations of the dots are giving me the rest of the counting numbers. Whoa, oh, my pen's not different colors. What a shame. I'll try to draw squares. You can see now, actually, these two sets of numbers really are the entire set of counting numbers split apart. Once, one part for this, where all the dashes were, one part for that, where all the dots were. Together, these must cover the entire set of counting numbers using each counting number once and exactly once. This is it. This is stunning. This is beautiful. 
There it is, by pure pictures, we're now actually seeing what's going on with those sequences and frequency sequences. Mind blown is what I say, whoa! Okay, let's put to use what we've been doing so far. Here's the sequence of square numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. The first square number is 1 squared, the second square number is 2 squared. In general, the nth square number is n squared. We have a formula for those, good and grand. Here's the sequence of numbers that are not squares, the non-squares, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11. Is there a formula for those? What's the nth non-square number? Huh, and that makes your brain hurt actually think about that. Is there a form of these things? Well, it turns out there is, and we can find it using the techniques of today. So let's do it, let's do it. The thing to notice here is I've got two sequences that actually cover all the counting numbers. I've got all the counting numbers split amongst two sequences, which looks like the end result of what we are doing earlier on. So let me think of this as the end result. This probably came from some sequence SN, but I added the position numbers and I got 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. So that came from some sequence, maybe SN, great. And then maybe I took the frequency sequence of that, grand, I can do that. And then if I know, if I add the position numbers to the frequency sequence, FSN plus their position numbers, I know I get all the remaining counting numbers, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, and so on. All right, so, so here's, here's, here's my hope, here's my hope. I have a formula for these, the square numbers, n squared, which means I might have a formula for that. I think I do. Which then, if I can get a formula from there to a formula for that one, then life will be gone because all I have to do is add n to that formula and then I'll suddenly have a formula for the non squares. That will do it. That will do it. So, can I start with what the formula I know from here and sort of backtrack it all the way through back around to there? Let's give it a go. I do know a formula for this sequence. Sn plus n is the square numbers, therefore it's given by n squared. Got that. Oh, which means I have a formula for Sn. Just it must be n squared minus n. There we go. All right, so two done. Got that one, that one. Can I now get a formula for the frequency sequence? All right, so get this back in my brain. The frequency sequence is the number of terms, number of terms that are less than n. All right, number of terms, the original sequence that are less than n. Um, I've got lots of n's floating around, so basically think of this like a terms of the form, some number squared minus itself. Um, so okay, so, the, so this will be the number of such numbers, this number, number of k such that uh, k squared minus k is less than n. All right, so that's what I'm looking for, the number of k such that k squared minus k is less than n. Things that look like that that are less than n. Grand, good. All right, so k squared minus k, k squared minus k. Um, well, let's see. Um, I see the little quadratic. Okay, my brain says I want to complete the square. k squared minus k plus a quarter would be nice because that is actually k minus a half squared. So it makes me think I want to add a quarter to both sides. But I'm not going to. I'm going to be sneaky. I tried that. Didn't work. Didn't get anywhere with it. So it was worth trying, but it didn't help me out. But try this instead. We've got to realize here, this is an integer. This is an integer, and I want strictly less than. There's a gap between them. Whatever I'm doing here is a gap of at least one between that quantity and that quantity. So if I want to sneak in an extra quarter, it won't bump me over to the integer. This will be less than n precisely when, ha ha ha, precisely when k squared minus k plus an extra quarter would still be less than n. Because that's not going to bump me up to the next integer, I'm still good and golden. That was sneaky. That was sneaky. Yes, this is less than n if that is, and this is less than n if that is. Whoa, because of that one integer, at least one integer gap between those, I know I can sneak in an extra quarter and still have truth going on. Wow, that now means I'm golden, because this is the number of k such that uh, k minus a half squared is less than n. That is the number of k such that uh, k minus a half is less than the square root of n. It's the number of k, number of k such that k is less than the square root of n plus a half. I want to know how many integers I have that are smaller than the square root of n plus a half. You know, it could be the integer to 1, the integer to 2, the integer to 3. The question is how high can I go and up to some highest number k that I'm still less than that. Well, well, what is that number? If I round this down to the nearest integer, that must be it. Round that down to the nearest integer, that must be the biggest k I can have. That must be the number of integers I can have. So actually, this I've got a formula. It's actually this quantity, square root of n plus a half, rounded down to the nearest integer. By the way, you can quickly check, this will never be an integer itself. The square root of n plus a half was never itself an integer, so this really is going to round down a little bit. 
So the biggest number I can have that's less than that is given by rounding down square root of n plus a half, which means the number of k I've got of 1 all the way up to that, that's the number of k's I have that are going to give me terms less than n. Whoa, whoa. So I have a formula for the frequency sequence, the nth term of the frequency sequence. Wow. But before I play with that, let me point something out. I can make this look a little bit simpler. Uh, let's just practice. What does it look like to round something down plus a half? So I've got some number x, I'm adding a half, and I'm rounding down to the biggest integer just below it. So if I do something like uh, 8.2 plus a half, that gives me 8.7 rounded down is 8. If I did say 8.4 plus a half, uh, that gives me 8.9, round that down to an integer, that's 8. But if I did say 8.7 plus a half, that bumps me over the 8s into the 9 realm, that's 9.2, that rounds me down to 9. In fact, actually, here's the, here's the halfway point. This rounds me down to 9. You can actually check that this actually equals just the integer, or just the value x rounded either up or down to the nearest integer. If you're below the half mark, you'll go down to the nearest integer. If you're above the half mark, you'll actually go up to the nearest integer. So actually, here's a simpler way to describe that formula. So we have just found out, ha ha ha, that the nth term of the frequency sequence is this. It's actually uh, the square root of n rounded up or down to the nearest integer. In which case, the formula for the nth non-square number, the nth non-square number is n plus round that down to the near, up or down to the nearest integer. Whoa, whoa. Uh, but just to be really clear, uh, since that's already an integer, this actually equals uh, just n plus the square root of n all rounded up or down appropriately. I like that version. I don't know why I like that version. But there is a formula for the nth non-square number. So what's the 100th non-square number? It is 100 plus the square root of 100. That's 10. So that's 110 rounded to the nearest integer. Oh, 110. Wow, the 110th non the 100th non-squared number is 110. Okay, lots of good stuff. Okay, here's some fun for you. The nth squared number is given by n squared, fine. And we just saw the nth non-squared number is given by n plus the square root of n rounded up or down to the nearest integer. All right, your challenge. Here's the sequence of triangular numbers. The nth triangular number is given by n times n plus 1, all divided by 2. Can you follow the work we just did? That is kind of identical. Practice it. Try it out to show that the nth non-triangular number is given by n plus the square root of 2n, rounded up or down. Okay, that's kind of cool. Do try it. But then I'm going to have fun, because I'm noticing here n plus the square root of 1n, n plus the square root of 2n. So what about n plus the square root of 3n, rounded? These are the non-square numbers. These are the non-triangular numbers. Uh, what non-numbers, is how silly question, what numbers are these? Hmm. Hmm. And I kind of want to do something in between, maybe. What if I did say n plus the square root of 1.5n, halfway between 1 and 2? Are they somewhere between being halfway between non-square and non-triangular? What's in between the non-squares and non-triangulars? What's going on there? So it could be fun to play with other non-sequences of this type, if you like, and see if they have any nice geometric meaning. Lots of fun here.